Last week we talked about low carb options at fast food places. Then we realized that was a very dumb idea. There are much better options when you're on the road. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another low carb keto carnivore chat. And this is a follow up to last week's uh, episode where I reviewed the Dunkin' Donuts, like some Dunkin' Bowl, it was some sort of sausage, uh, egg and uh, pepper or whatever, uh, omelet in a paper cup. It was ridiculous. It was like five or six bucks for this, this chemically processed uh, bad idea. And then I realized in the middle of that video, since most of my videos are impromptu, I have a little bit of a script today because I'm talking about some photos, but I realized that it's dumb for people to um, feel like they're obligated to buy something at a fast food restaurant, especially if they're low carb. Um, it's not like it's the last restaurant in, in a, uh, for the next 500 miles and you're gonna be all hungry and stuff. A, if you're low carb, your hunger doesn't hit you like a, like a wall of bricks. Uh, if you're properly low carb, you can really just go a long time without eating. So you should never be in a situation where you got to eat right then and there. And oh, Dunkin' Donuts is the only place or McDonald's or all those fast food places should honestly, other, unless you're getting a coffee or a tea, um, no sugar, of course, you should never really eat at fast food places. That that's We do it so uh, limited at Starbucks, coffee and... Uh, every now and then um, Dunkin Donuts, but uh, I try to eliminate cause every single time I, I, I it's like Charlie Brown, I, I go to kick the football. Um, every single time I try, I feel like crap and I can definitely taste there's something um, unsound in it. So anyway, my whole point was like, what, if you're at Dunkin Donuts or McDonald's, like why feel obligated? There's a supermarket probably five or 10 minutes away in any direction you go in New Jersey at least, um, and I really think that supermarkets should be your fast food. Uh, if you really need to eat and you're like starving or you had a big workout day the day before and you just forgot to pack your, uh, your uh, low carb lunch uh, and you truly need it, that the supermarket should be your first stop. But one thing uh, that you really should avoid uh, and most people should avoid at the supermarkets, all the packaged junk. Um, for instance, like deli sandwiches. I mean, I'm sure they make a fine sandwich, but it's on really crappy uh, white flour bread. And I mean, if you're really in a pinch, you could take the meat off, off and the vegetables off the sandwich and just eat the guts of the sandwich. But I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, another thing to watch out for, and they stick it front and center every single time, these, uh, these ridiculous chemical donuts and, and other cookies and they're, they, God knows you never know when they made them. There wasn't some like sweet grandma in an apron making these cookies. It was a freaking robot pumping chemicals and just squirting these things out. Never buy these things. They're just a complete and utter waste of your energy and, and body uh, uh, sanity. Um, and another thing, of course, you'll see entire rows of chips and pretzels. It's really easy to, to pick up a bag of potato chips or tortilla chips and shovel them in your mouth while you're driving down the road, but it, it's just going to hurt you in the long run. So I came up with an idea while I was making that last video that they're really just, you, you can find at least half a dozen or more, seven ideas I came up with, um, where you can pick up a snack for the road that is good for you, it's low carb, and it's not going to uh, like mess your ketosis up. But uh, here's one thing that I really like. Whenever I go to ShopRite or even doesn't matter what place, they're pretty affordable, around the same price, is hit, the, hit up the olive bar. I don't eat olives and I, I, I don't know if I can recommend them or not, but they often or usually have fresh mutz balls, usually in some sort of oil. Olive oil uh, is okay, but you know, you could drain it. Get, get a half a pound of these, uh, these mozzarella balls, where they have some seasoning on it, Italian uh, oils and stuff. It's like five bucks or four bucks. Those will fill you up and keep you going for a long time and they taste really, really good. 
I have to say the shop, the shop right at least, they make their own mutts there. It's just as good as the Italian delis in New York and so on. Um, another good option, you know, instead of picking up these stupid egg bowls or horrible sandwiches, hit up the, the, the deli and you don't even have to order a lot. Order like a quarter or a fifth of a pound of roast beef um, and another fifth of a pound of some sort of cheese to fatten it up like cheddar, provolone, even uh, slicing mutts, and you, you make your own little roll-ups, and, and you could even uh, throw some mayo in there. I'm sure they have mayo packets. Probably not the best mayo, but you can, you can do it. Um, and you can get some salamis here. They have nice salamis. And if you don't feel like waiting online or talking to people and you're all antisocial, just pick up some cut meat. It's gonna cost you a little more, because they, you know, five, six bucks a pack. You know, you're 10, 12 dollars, you got a, enough meat uh, to roll up for a couple of people, especially if you're not traveling alone. Uh, deli meat's fine if you don't eat it every day. I mean, yeah, it's processed and it has all sorts of chemicals in it too and preservatives, but as a low carb meal, it's better than going to Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's and getting crap. Uh, here's my favorite, honestly. Uh, it's almost the perfect food. Go, I mean, they're not the perfect eggs, but get some peeled, uh, hard boiled eggs. They have a whole bunch of different varieties depending on your budget and, and whether you're all anti-organic or anti-non-organic. Uh, you can get a whole dozen, uh, what do you call it, uh, boiled and peeled eggs. You don't have to deal with the shells. It's like four dollars. And it, obviously if you're traveling a long distance and you eat, you can't really eat more than three. You're gonna get full. Um, you know, oh by the way, these do taste better with salt. Always try to have sea salt packets in your car. Starbucks has them, at least some Starbucks I've been to. Because um, regular salt packets, processed, refined salt, it's, it's just nutritionally useless and it's actually bad for you. It's, a, it's acidic instead of alkaline. But Starbucks does have sea salt packets. Grab a huge handful. They're a multi-billion dollar company. They're not gonna kill you for having a few extra salt packs. Keep them in your glove box or in your side pocket of your door. And you can have sea salt in your car at all times. That's my little bonus tip. It's not even gonna be in the description or the title. So if you watched five or six minutes into this, you got a bonus tip. Starbucks has nice sea salt. Um, but you can also, if you don't want uh, the a dozen eggs for four dollars already cooked for you. You can also get organic ones. There's six for about four or five bucks. I think they were on sale for four fifty. Um, and if you really want to go cheap and you don't feel like buying a whole dozen eggs, Shoprite has their brand of of uh, peeled eggs for two fifty. You're set, and you're not going to be all grossed out with chemicals and other uh, MSG nonsense. Here's one that I I like. Not many people do. But pre-cooked bacon, it's like four, four bucks for the cheapest one. Um, I think the ShopRite brand's like four bucks. And you can get organic uh, or non-nitrate free, but they're ready to go. They're not messy, they're not greasy, there's nothing wrong with it. You nibble on them slow and they do satiate you pretty good. They're, odds are you won't be able to eat a whole box of the small one. You can get a jumbo pack for $10. And it stays good, you can leave it in your car in the heat Bring it home, stick it in your refrigerator. There's, it's not gonna go bad. That's the wonderful thing about bacon, or even sausages for them. They just don't go bad. I don't care what they put them. I don't eat them every day. They're just fine for me. And, and they're always gonna be a better alternative to fast food junk. Um, here's a couple other options I'm gonna include. Uh, they're not the best uh, options at the supermarket, but they're still uh, pretty good if you're feeling uh, you know, tempted by, by it. Uh, rotisserie chickens, uh, a lot of them are really good. They're usually cheap too, five, six bucks. You get a whole chicken. Uh, I don't eat much chicken anymore, but I will always eat a rotisserie chicken over a fried chicken. I used to love fried chicken like you wouldn't believe, but it's the breading on there. You could technically eat fried chicken without too much uh, impact to your blood sugar, but you're better off just eating the rotisserie chicken. I always eat the skin off the whole entire thing first, and then maybe I'll eat a drum or a thigh or both, and then I'll leave the rest for whoever wants to uh, uh, vulturize it. But uh, 
it's it's really a really good uh, those things are often juicy and keep in mind though that the later you wait in the day they it, they might end up getting a little dry and crusty and like gross so just so, sometimes uh, the the supermarkets write the hour that they were made but not everybody does that but you you can visually inspect it another thing that isn't bad is like some places have these uh, serve your own nut dispensers and all sorts of other fruity little sweet things in there but it's hard to find organic peanuts by the way they have them at ShopRite that I went to and they're like 550 a pound you don't even need a pound just get half a pound and you peck on them while you drive and they'll they'll satiate you pretty good but just keep in mind that when you eat peanuts and also like white meat chicken um, you can overdo it with the protein and that will come back to haunt you if you eat too much protein in a given day without enough physical activity it will turn to sugar if you don't you know digest it and use it and lastly is a little bonus here this is nuts but you can get an entire pint of this new rebel ice cream that's out and you can eat the entire pint and still have less carbs than that little hokey chemical bowl of eggs that I mentioned last week. And it's it's just fantastic. Uh, like you can get like the uh, six or seven or eight grams of carbs for the entire pint of ice cream. Now keep in mind it does have erythritol and monk fruit uh, sweetener, but it's still less carbs than, than most other fast food meals. But I always want to note this when I talk about sweets. I have a theory and I haven't been able to prove it, but I think eating sweets in general is just generally not a good idea uh, for your body because something about the sweet sensation should never be treated as a everyday thing. I think it's a bad thing that's happened to humanity. Just stick with your hardcore meats and uh, stuff like that and you'll be okay but if you can believe it uh, I highly recommend the peanut butter fudge it's wow it's really really a treat and I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be uh, enjoying this because I, I we'll see I may, I may eat it every day for a month and then if everything is fine and I'm still on the right track I might just keep it in rotation but I don't know anything about erythritol and, and monk fruit on a long term basis so keep that in mind there's your seven ideas those are the seven ideas uh, that are way better than any fast food low carb option and I'm sure there's a whole lot more at the supermarket that are just fine I'm sure you can find some pork rinds which are fine you can find a block of cheese for a dollar fifty or two dollars that you can just eat like a like a caveman Arr, I'm gonna eat this cheese just don't do the fast food anymore it's just when you think about it, the whole concept, it's a corporation and they're constantly in a lab fiddling with the, with the formulas and how long can they last. And I think they, somebody did something. They left some sort of hamburger or something, some sort of processed food. They left it out for a year and didn't even get any mold on it. What does that tell you? So let me know what you think. And if anybody uh, agrees with me regarding the uh, just eliminating fast food and, and mega corporations from your, uh, from your daily routine, and if that's a good idea. See you next week on Low Carb Keto Carnivore Chat on NJRoot22.com.